the flat land like a man on the run Riding down Highway 61 Sides of the roads all lined with fields Nothing but sunset in the windshield As I ride into town, this is where I go to slow down. Miles and miles of soybeans and corn, I'm in the place where the blues was born. Hey everybody, it's Brad Chapel back with the Crappie Connection and uh, today uh, put your lis listening caps on and uh, grab a notebook because I've got two special guests with me here. My buddy at the end here, Den Bernard uh, Williams, he's a, he's, a, he's a character. You'll get uh, some good laughs out of him this, <laughs> these couple days. And uh, right in the middle here is Mr. Rabbit Rogers, which is a fishing legend to say the least. I'll say an icon, honestly. Uh, he's caught probably more crappie than uh, that than this Bass Pro Shop's a whole, I would imagine. But uh, definitely want to thank you guys uh, for your time today. And, you know, we're going to talk about history and of crappie fishing and how much it's evolved through the years. And, you know, some tips from a, from a gentleman that has so much knowledge like you that can give, you know, some people starting out in this great sport that we all love. But uh, thank you guys for coming on today. Thank, thank you. Thank you for that great introduction. <laughs> well, I mean, I could go on and on about you, Rabbit. I mean, anybody I, out here. How else would you talk about a Hall of Fame? An icon. Right. Uh, and, and that's the truth here. Uh, when I started crappie fishing, you know, you, you hear Rabbit Rogers. Yeah. Yeah, and you still do when you go on the reservoir. All room. over. Oh, anybody seen Rabbit? Yeah. yeah what's Rabbit up today? And there's a good reason behind it because he is a, a fantastic fisherman, and uh, I, I definitely wanted wanted him on the show a long time since the really right. beginning. And uh, same thing with Bernard. Bernard does a lot of writing and different things for different articles, and magazines, and online. And uh, Bernard, throw it out there and kind of tell us what all you get to do. Man, we uh, been with Magnolia Crappie Club now, going on about 15 years. Um, I do the Magnolia Crappie Club website, the Magnolia Crappie Club Adventures magazine, uh, Facebook page, all of photography, videography, and just, I'm trying to get some younger guys to come along and try to uh, develop their skills at this. It's got to be, it's something you got to be dedicated to. I mean, it, the the, the pay is none, and, and, the, and the hours are long. So, mm -hmm. but it, it you get to see a lot of fishing. You get to see a lot of interview people. Like, uh, if you ask somebody like Rabbit, what did he do? He's gonna give you the same story every time. But, but when I do it, I you you got to learn how to pick certain things out of them. And that's what, you know, when you, in order to write, you got to be able to make a story out of a little of nothing, so. And it has got to be believable, too. But that's that, that's where I have a problem at. A lot of people just don't believe what I be writing. They might know you. Exactly. <laughs> Mr. O. Rogers, how many tournaments for have you won through the years? I, I've always wanted to ask you that one question. Well, I, I, don't, I don't really know. Uh, a lot. Yeah, uh, probably the best year Jane and I ever had was we won four tournaments. We played seven times in the top five mm -hmm. out, of, out of ten tournaments. So, you know, that was be an exceptionally good year, and we won the championship. So, mm -hmm. so you know, we was, we was on a roll. We, we won too much. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
back back years ago, you know, uh, we fished different tournaments and all. And <coughs> then we decided we wanted a, a family-oriented group, and we started the Magnolia Crop Club in 92. In 92. Right. A bunch of us got together and just had a meeting in my living room. And we came up with the directors, uh, all the rules and regulations. And what were some of the first rules that were out in you know some tournaments back then? How many poles? How many poles? Yeah, and fish and yeah. Everything? We had decided that you didn't have two hands, but you couldn't use over two poles per person. Mm -hmm. And we we weighed start with we weighed thirty fish. Wow. <laughs> then, wow. we went, then we went to twenty, and then to fifteen, then to ten, and. Uh, but R and M got us down to seven. They, mm -hmm. they wanted to align with the the national clubs. Right. They right. Seven, right. You know. well, and I thought I thought uh, twenty fish, thirty fish was hard to catch. But now I can't even catch seven. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, can five is my limit now. Yeah. Yeah. But R wants to go to five. But exactly. I don't know. I don't know. I think I I don't think we need to kill them extra two. All of our scales now are set at to weight within a hundredth of a pound. Mm -hmm. And then if you have a tie, the big fish would decide who's the winner. So, And if, if you have a tie on big fish, I say go back out there and fish for 30 more minutes. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and let that tie. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, how has a sport changed so much in your lifetime, Robert? It's the, it's the number of poles. Uh, the drift fishing, we didn't, you didn't see that many people drift fishing, the pole holders, mm -hmm. the big boats, the side-by-side -side seating. Mm -hmm. they're, they're building boats for crappie fishing. We used to, used to bass, you know, we all bass boats, mm -hmm. call them bass boats. Now we have crappie boats. Yeah. And, I, won't, I won't get into the Garmin too much here yet, but I've, mm -hmm. I've had Garmin since they first come out. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, low ran, I had Laurent before that, and then I went to saw the Garmin come out, and I started mm -hmm. the Garmin. So mm -hmm. they come out with that little 500 C mm -hmm. to start with. We called the Garmin back then an old man's step back. It was so easy to learn. I yeah, mean, just yeah. press a button. That's right. I got an old iPhone. <laughs> I, I know how to work it. I can't use these new ones, you know. Uh, uh, back years ago, I know I hear guys, you know, they were trying to, like, and I've always wanted to know exactly how did how did you guys do that back there? Find a That's the only way you could. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I cannot imagine trying to find something in a lake like that. And sometimes, you know, it, I had a if you got a deaf on the rear and the front, uh -huh. and I old stick steering boat, which I Jane and I won those stick steering deer crab back in '91, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it helps to have one of that phone on each end, and you're looking at both of them right then, and, and mm -hmm. you can, your, your back of the boat may swing over your structure, <coughs> and you can throw your marker, you mm -hmm. know, and I'll explain that marker. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the key to, to what we've done all these years is that marker. Really? That, without that marker, I, I just, I'm lost still. Yeah. Huh. I can't mark it, yeah. That's even now, even now with really? the garment, yeah. With the, with the, with a live image, and I still, you know, I have to have that marker. Mm -hmm. But, Rabbit, you can do, I've noticed you over the years, you can do excellent at Barnett, but when you get on those core lakes, what happens? I don't have the, the, the experience. Of no, the, the, the structure's different on Barnett than most any lake. Oak Tibby is close to Barnett. It's just a little Barnett, and we do pretty good on Oak Tibby. But you used to be, uh, you used to murder them on Shotar, Eagle, I mean, Washington, all of those Delta Lake Oxbows. That was, that was your, uh, I remember Ferguson, you were good on Ferguson. Hey, was, the, was the structure there the same? I was just able to find that structure and all, uh, and being able to fish it with the mark. Mm -hmm. You got to pinpoint it, and sometimes it's just like fishing in a five-gallon bucket. Not just in that certain little area. We didn't yeah. have a live scope to mm -hmm. see exactly where they were in that top. Mm -hmm. Right. When you go to a new lake, and, and this kind of goes back before the the live scope, and that's what we're kind of everybody's kind of going to point <laughs> there. But yeah, um, well, there's different yeah. ways to fish. Oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. And you know we like them all. But how did you go about finding fish on a new body of water? 
I know that's one of the questions that all the time that viewers want to know is, how do you find fish on a new body of water? How do you break down? How do you break down that lake? Well, I, you know, it, this guy's a master now. I'm not kidding yeah. you guys. I go. I start shallow and then work my way deeper. Mm -hmm. If they're not in that shallower water, I, I work my way deeper. And, and normally, you hunt structure or, or cover. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> once you find them in a certain depth of water, you know you're looking for that structure in the same depth somewhere else. Even mm -hmm. pick out as many places as you can. Don't try to don't try to fish and fill up a <laughs> cooler full of fish, yep. so you're not learning anything except you catch a right. fish out of one place. Just if you catch a couple, three or four like Pinar was talking about, just move on to another one. Mm -hmm. Try to find another and mark that one as many as you can. Uh, I used to have just a handheld GPS, mm -hmm. 500 is all I could mark. <laughs> I didn't know that after 500 it race started racing. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> you go back and say, well, where did that go? Where's three at? Yeah. It's, it's a new three. As far as I know, that's what happened. I, I don't mm -hmm. know. These now, they're 5,000, you know. Right. Oh, or 10, yeah. I don't know. I've got, I'm, I'm kicking about 2,600 waypoints I noticed this past week on my unit. <laughs> And it honestly looks like a little bomb exploded out here on the Ross Barnett. <laughs> yeah. Because there, there's dots everywhere. But um, I know it goes back, you know, in the history of crappie fishing tournaments, you know, kind of in my mind, and at least for the, the guys in Mississippi and surrounded areas, kicked off in your living room sounded like pretty much. Pretty much. Sure it is. I fished against Rabbit um, back when they had a crappie thon at the reservoir. You remember that rabbit? Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And you yeah. won it. Um, and that was back in the 80s. The first first crop I thought I fished was in, I think it was 84. That, that yeah, was it, yeah, yeah, 84. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had 153 boats. And in uh, fact, Performance Marine on, on uh, 43 Highway, mm -hmm. we had that big old barn there. And, uh, uh, that's where we uh, had the meeting and all. It was completely full. It was new. Mm -hmm. Everybody's excited and everything. And <clears throat> am I am I correct when I say Croppathon led to Croppy Masters or, or was it harder right. Yeah, right. eventually, yeah. But that was a long time ago. What about uh how do you feel about all the new technology now into crappie fishing compared to I'm using it. You use it? <laughs> yeah, I'm using it too. Man, I, I, I'm, I'm sold on it. I couldn't yeah. go without it now. No. What have you learned that you didn't know before, you think? How spooky they are. Yeah. Fish yeah. Uh, I never knew. Had no, had no idea they were that, that spooky. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how I was ever able to catch them mm -hmm. using the marker and the 11-foot jig bow and just sitting right beside it. But yeah. What they do, they, they run, then they'll come back. That's what I kind of figured, you know, my first year on the reservoir. And we're, oh, when we say reservoir, we're talking about Ross Barnett here right. in central Mississippi. But it, and it's a lake that's got a, a lot of standing timber in it. And in the summertime, a lot of guys go out there and they just fish the, the standing timber. And that's the first thing I notice is, man, I don't, I don't know how these guys ever caught fish out here because when that water slick and you see a fish on a standing timber, he leaves. He just goes. Oh, yeah, he takes off. And I guess everybody waits for him to come back. I mean, that's the only thing I could ever figure out. Right. But uh, I can remember one time, Rabbit, I remember Rabbit. I used to I used to hunt him on the lake rather than fish. <laughs> you went rabbit hunting? <laughs> I've been <laughs> rabbit hunting. Yeah. And the Rabbit would see you, if he saw you, oh, man, he'd instantly roll up and take off. He'd go. <laughs> <laughs> and if you found his trash mm -hmm. or his structure, he fixed that. He come back and move. I, I, I have moved. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that far. No, not that far. We'll, we'll, I'm gonna talk about structure with you too. And but I want to get it back to you know some advice he would give somebody starting out crappie fishing, and, and you know they're wanting to get into the sport of crappie fishing. What would you advise them to do right now today? By Alaska? No, well, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Yeah, you got to learn how to fish. It's like playing a guitar. You got to learn how to play the guitar before you buy a, yeah. an expensive electric guitar. Mm -hmm. It's just so I, you know, 
Uh, you got first you gotta, if you like it first. You got to love it. Yeah. Well, you got to keep it keep it as simple as you can. You know mm -hmm. that. Uh, mm -hmm. But most of them are, are drift fishermen, mm -hmm. and that's about the easiest and simplest way to fish is drift fishing. Sure. Spider you, rigging. Yes, it's spider rigging. Right. On your uh, spider rigging setup, what would you recommend somebody use? A half ounce, full ounce, double minnow setup? Well, to be honest, the only time I ever spider rig is tournaments or practices for tournaments. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I just jig fish. I don't take but you should have take one pole and I broke one one day and I said, well, what am I going to do now? <laughs> so I take two uh -huh. in case I break one. But I'm 99% I'm jig fishing. All right, what pole do you use? I know you've got B&M, and I know you've okay. been with B&M forever. Yeah, even uh, Buck Simmons mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, was, first owner, yeah, was owner of uh, B&M. And uh, Jack Wells come on and married his daughter. He's his son-in-law. And we, well, I went to see Buck when we first organized the club and all. And then I had Buck's best and all. That's coming from Buck Simmons. Mm -hmm. But I used the, uh, the first pole that come out with was a 12 foot graphite jig pole. Mm -hmm. And up until then, all you could use was a nine foot fly rod. Right. Mm -hmm. Or a cane pole. Right. So that's how important it was. Did you ever have that flimsy one that went? Oh, no, no, no. That, uh, that's what I started with. No, I, I, I got to feel it though. And once I found that. You got hooked, yeah. yeah. But I gradually, as I got older, I went to the. When they come out with the Sam Heaton, mm -hmm. I like I love the Sam Heaton, and then I, to that, right now I'm using the bottom reel seat, mm -hmm. eleven foot Sam Heaton. I remember that pole coming out about what ten years ago. Yeah, I've, I've got the first one to come out, and I've got it, and I'm still using. It. Oh wow! Right, I don't use it every day, and I'm too proud of it. So yeah. I, I use some. But well, Rabbit, didn't you design uh, a reel for BNM? That little. Yeah. Well, I. I couldn't find a reel I like, so I, I made me one, and then a local local guy here uh, made them. But they was too bulky and all, and I've modified them since, you know. So, mm -hmm. to and then B and M picked it up. Mm. Yeah, they they have it made, and but I've still got it modified from that, even you know, to my own personal. Yeah. All right. What about? I know everybody. We're, we're thinking about somebody getting started in crappie fishing. What? pound test line and what kind of line are you using to crop your fish with with these jig poles? I'm using fluorocarbon uh, 10 pound test. Uh, I really like it. I, I used colored line for years 10 pound test mm -hmm. and then I, I, the fluorocarbon doesn't have the memory and, and it, it sinks good mm -hmm. and I really like it. And you ever tried braid? I tried braid. I use a, a, a loop, uh, a bow knot and braid is real abrasive, you know. And it would wear through and just fall off. The jig just fall off the pole. Mm -hmm. hmm. It wears you say line. Like a, is that a loop knot kind of? The bow knot? A bow knot, yeah, just a loop knot, yeah. You run it through the loop three times or? No, just once. Just, no, just one right. time and then just two overhands and drop it through and pull okay. it. Just get your slack out of it. And that way that jig will sit level. No, it doesn't. I, I'll show you. It doesn't sit level. Let me see if I can find it. I can't see it. There it is. It doesn't sit level, but it don't matter what it does out of the water. Right. What it does in the water. Right. right. So, and there's a loop knot. See, it just moves mm -hmm. any Total which way freedom. in the world. Completely free. Rabbit, do you use your jig pole to get that jig loose? Oh, yeah. Heck yeah. But when you the one told me, why would you uh, use a... Fifty dollar jig pole to get a two dollar jig, or get a dollar jig a little. What? So what? I, that might have been Jack Wells. So. <laughs> oh yeah, Jack Wells. Well. Yeah, he don't like you to break tips off in no. poles and all that. But you take two fingers and you run it down the line and just when you hear it click, mm -hmm. just barely tap it. You don't jig it too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'd like to see that in action. Actually, we'll, we'll try to get that one. On film one day, you unhung in a, uh, a right. jig in the lake. Oh, but you know, you can kind of bounce that and it'll come loose. If you really got the expertise, you know, to, to jig fish. Mm -hmm. But Rabbit, with this fluorocarbon line, when that fish grabs that jig and come up with it, can you see it, the slack come out of the line? Or? No, I just feel it on my, I put the line in my fingers. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. I can just feel the least little thing, you know. Well, and I know we've talked about this before, I remember 
usually when I see somebody fishing and they're jig fishing, I can just about always tell they're pretty new if I see them moving that pole a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll see yeah. them out there doing this. I'm like, oh, yeah, they're just starting crappie fishing. How would you, how do you go about <coughs> fishing a tree top that you feel like it's got fish on there? Do you start at the top of that and work yourself down into the top, or how would you actually go about doing that? he go for the gusto. <laughs> no, no. he go for the gusto. It's straight up and down. If you know it's a bed spraying type top, you mm-hmm. just go up straight up and down. You can't throw out there and let it drift back. It's going to hang up mm-hmm. naturally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you want it straight down going right into his bedroom. And how, how let it fall natural, you know. You, you want to let it fall natural. You see somebody just holding it down. Well, you could do that, but I just let it fall natural. And you can see it. If he picks it up, you can see your line, your, your line stop. You know? mm-hmm. uh, you well, how do you work that fish out of there? Do you let him swim? Pull, no, I pull. Oh, okay. Pull. You, you sit back on him, huh? Sit on him, pull. <laughs> Most of the time, he'll unwrap himself if you'll pull. Right. I know you got some jigs on the table, and I yeah. definitely want to talk about these things because they're some, they're pretty hot looking. He, he yeah, might show some secrets here. And he guy. got his own designs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I, can you, how do I see You just this? stick it out front and we'll get him. Oh, okay. What's it, that's an eighth ounce lead jig, and it's a round head, but I take a grinder and grind the, grind the sides off of it. Huh. And I'll take a file, smooth it up a little bit. Take a take a take one of these sharpies and put the eye, put the eye on it. And then I take well, I, I'm getting ahead of myself, but anyway, I, I put super glue on the eyes, you know, to keep them on. Yeah, super glue is waterproof. Now this here is a, a tube mm-hmm. jig skirt, plastic jig skirt. I just cut the tail off of them, make my own tail. Mm-hmm. I want some flash and some rubber legs, and it doesn't matter how good a, one of them little little old uh, flippies, you know, little rubber tails do. Yeah. Out of the water, that's what it does in the water. Mm. And this this here in the water, it, it it's just like a marabou kind. Of. Mm-hmm. And just you got all, sakes, plus yeah. I got a lot of flash there, see. Mm-hmm. And jigging is it's 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 like say it's dropping and it's, it gets all the way down. You pick it up. And then let it drop again, mm-hmm. but you don't like to say yo-yo it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I've seen that. You know, yeah. Like, hey, Rabbit, what kind of hook is that? This here is a mustad hook. It's a black nickel. Mm-hmm. It's super sharp. Super sharp. Strong. Extra, extra sharp. Do you uh, sharpen your hooks or when, no, when one no, gets dull? No, you don't have to sharpen these. No. Uh, but a regular jig you buy, it, they're gonna use the cheapest hook they right. find. You know, all cheap material and. That hook right there, they couldn't sell it for what they do if you had to buy those no. expensive hooks, yeah. But you, you got your own mold, you pull your own. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah everything. You got a do-it mold? Yeah, yeah. Have you customized it any? No, no, okay. I don't customize it. Uh, I, I have to super glue these tails. I push that up in that mm-hmm. hollow body, see? This yeah. flash and that the flash rubber. Yeah. Where do you buy those supplies from to buy to do that? Barlow's. Barlow's. Okay. Yeah. You can find that on the internet. I know. Yeah. Find bar. I just that's crinkle flash and uh, layers and rubber layers. Mm-hmm. You just get ten to a layer. And right. Just cut them and fix them. I, I know one question I get asked by you know people fishing with me or you know through comments on Facebook even is jig colors. How do you go about selecting jig colors? I've got my own little mindset. I want to see if we're similar or we're apart. I, it, it, uh, like dark to, days? No, no, no. I just look at the water. And if I, like, we fished Sardis this past Saturday, mm-hmm. and uh, the water was. Stain. Yeah, heavy, heavy stain or murky. Murky is what I call it. Uh, you, need, you need some. This is a jig I used. The reason I brought it. Mm-hmm. And they didn't have any trouble seeing it. Mm-hmm. No. They didn't have any trouble seeing it. You get it close to him, he's going to hit it. And I like a little black. And, of course, here's the same setup, except it's got an orange head and a different little uh, chartreuse tail. Do you think the head, the color on the head makes a difference? Have you seen that, you know, whether some, I like to use unpainted heads a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. But uh, have you seen that to be a big 
type. Which, se yeah, no. selling point. No, I don't think so. No, it's, 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 I hate to say this because this is a Bobby Garland bill. <laughs> <laughs> it's That's not, true. it's not what, it's where. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, where you, well, yeah, if you, if you, you know, if there's fish there, you know, you can catch some of them. And as uh, far as unpainted, I've gone to 10, and you don't have to do anything to 10. Mm -hmm. It's one of the best metals in the world. And it's half the weight of lead. That's why I was going to ask you why you beat me to the punch. I already knew, but yeah, because it, you can get a bigger hook in there. What is your reason behind wanting that bigger size? It's a Slow bigger ball. target. Like that's a three sixteenth, and it, it's just uh, probably weighs about a thirty second. No, it's about heavier than that. No, a, it's about it would be half of a three sixteenth. Mm -hmm. So okay. it'd be uh, less than a, probably about an eighth, mm -hmm. somewhere in there. You know. I'm, I had the math on it, yeah. And as far as super glue goes, you know, that Loctite liquid mm -hmm. in this container right here, you don't have to worry about it spilling or anything. You can use the whole 0 .35, you know. That's about 500 crop in each bottle. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that is a fantastic-looking jig. And, and that's about, what, uh, one off, off, I mean, a, a number one hook. That is a number one, right. yes. Okay. I use, I normally use a two or a one. I never, hardly ever use a four. Mm -hmm. Number ones, number twos, any one all or two all? No, no, I don't go that big. Do you like, do you like light wire hooks? The ones that have been real easy when On you get them? Yeah. No, no, I, I, I use 10 pound tests at fluorocarbon, it's straight, it's straight in this hook. In fact, I straighten that one out, I think. Two or three times. No, not that many, but I, it, it will actually straighten it out. Mm -hmm. And where well, you know you got a good, some good line and high tough, see, see if you can break it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really racking on that. Yeah. You ain't even come close to breaking it. I can it. hear it even. <laughs> what brand of line do you use? Does it matter? Seagull. See, okay. Seagull, yeah. I play with fluorocarbon a little bit. Of course, I'm doing a whole different technique than a lot of guys. Yeah. Besides Bernard, mm -hmm. he's a big long liner. But, uh, you know, I can see it being deadly with, you know, especially in the summertime when the water clears up. Me and Brad water. can't afford to see uh -huh. fluorocarbon <laughs> long liner because we do. This X, too. This X. It's, it's smaller diameter than mm -hmm. a 10, but really it's a 9. Well, all right, we're, we're, we're not done with the spawn down here in the south, but we're getting ready and... I'm already starting to think about the summertime patterns. What are what are some things that you do in there in the dog days of summer when it's hot August. and it's August? I mean, Mississippi, we're we're smoking down here every day. What do you do in the summertime to keep catching fish? Because that's probably he my stopped biggest fishing problem. at ten o'clock in the morning. I know what he really did. <laughs> <laughs> well, generally, most of your old lake, most of your visible structures mm -hmm. fish. You know, every day. I mean. It's, Barnett's, Barnett's, you know, it gets a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. And you, what you want to do is find that isolated structure. You know, about, if you're fishing in 20 feet of water, you want to find it, it comes up to at least half of the depth of the water, maybe about 10 feet. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's going to be some of your better places to fish. Yeah. Somewhere that's not getting the daily pressure. And well, do you like structure with limbs coming off of it? Oh yeah, you gotta have it horizontal. Yeah. Okay. They're gonna get up under it, you know. And mm -hmm. You can see it on your uh, life scope. Mm -hmm. There'd be a fork in a tree, and there'd be three or four of them right in that fork. You, know? mm -hmm. you, you can top that jig right down in there. That's, rather than chasing them in open water, that's what I'm doing. It's just mm -hmm. finding them in structure and knowing exactly where they are located in that structure. Right. I know we're, we're getting on the subject, and anybody that's knows rabbit that. He's, he's got a lot of uh, rabbit holes out there in the lake. How do you go about building a good piece of structure that attracts crappie and is fishable? As I know, I and it lasts a while. And last. I mean, you don't want to do it for one season. Right. Uh, I use I use dead cedar. I mean, I, with no bark on it even. They're talking about the needles gone. I'm not a no bark. It's just like a deer horn. Like a cedar post or? Cedar tree. No, with a tree with limbs. And, and what I do is, is cut it down, you know, generally it's about a six inch mm -hmm. base. And just got some good limbs on it. You cut those limbs off about three feet mm -hmm. to 
you shorten it up some because you can't can't have all them old limbs sticking out. And you can either stand it up on a pallet, oak pallet, or lay down on a, you build you a, a little, I'm going to say a little house. Uh, I don't know how to say it. Uh, I think it anyway out of two to fours. Mm -hmm. A frame is what I'm talking about. And it, like I say, use a uh, four foot post on the two fours for mm -hmm. your legs, put it up about two feet and lay that tree on that. Mm -hmm. And you got to use uh, concrete ropes to put it down, you know. Wow. And what time of night do you put these up? I've gone at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but years ago now, you got to have a permit now right. to do yeah. anything. You know. but, uh, the frame is... I built it to suit my boat, which is 44 wide and 54 long. I it won't fit my boat. <laughs> so you just sit on the deck of the boat and then drive it and drop yeah, it? On the back of the boat, I take the mm -hmm. set of six steering boat and I got me a, some boards fixed where I can just slide it off. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing what a, what a 15 and a half foot aircraft boat a tote. <laughs> 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 yeah. But I don't do it anymore. But, Rabbit, you mentioned one time you told me about Bodoc. It's hard yeah, to find. Yeah, you can throw it in. It don't matter what. Yeah, it, but, it's hard to but, find. And it'll last, what, 40 years? It'll last like 100 years. But it turns every two inches. It turns. and It's not easy to fit. You want to build something that you don't hang up on. Right. If you're going to drop in there and be hung up, fetch the price, well, mm -hmm. it's not yeah. going to do you any good. Right. I, I, no, I've seen some stuff on the reservoir. And I, I've got one piece of structure in my mind that, that I've always wondered, did you put it out? Probably. This this worth fishing, I probably it's, put it it's out. It's almost got fish in the summer. <laughs> yeah. It's in Macmillan Lake, the kind of tail area. But yeah. it's it's a box that's attached to a side of a tree. And it's got the holes cut out on the side of the box and then no, even on top of Did I show you that? Yeah, one we, time we, we've seen in it. In my boat? Yeah. But I guess... About nine, ten feet underneath the water. Yeah, it's always got a lot of fish. And I said, I bet this is a rabbit hole right here. Well, yeah, you got to get that structure up off the bottom. If it's mm -hmm. sitting right on the bottom or something, you know. It, but, Rabbit, what about PVC? Do you like? No, I don't use it. I don't buy. I don't, I don't buy anything hardly except the riffraff. I mean, the, not riffraff, but the concrete. And the nails. <laughs> Screws, yeah. Rope. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's just a lot of work. You got to have. The, but but does PVC work? Does PVC work? Does anything, it hold? Anything, anything. Does it hold? Uh, what's that? The little uh, plankton. plankton. Yeah. Does it hold the plankton like? Like I, wood. I've never wood. used that much of it, but what I pulled up, you know, most it attaches to most everything. Mm -hmm. All that old, I, I call them garballs. I don't know what right. they are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about? Though? Yeah. What about like a uh, river fishing? Because one thing that we've kind of got down here is, you know, we've got a big river system that feeds this lake, so. You know, do you ever try to add structure to the to the river, or is it mainly just that open water, big water? I don't know. Rabbit goes up there with his power, so. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right now, you don't need to add anything to that river. It's got yeah. too much. Yeah. The trees, they, these old big boats and the waves and all, they've washed so many trees in there. It's, it's really too much. Mm -hmm. You want to isolate the structure. So you wouldn't go into a stump field that has a ton of timber and put something else there? No, ain't no need. No, you you yeah. can find enough in there. But rabbit, oh, do you do you like up the river as well as you do down in the lake? No, uh, the main lake in the summer is the best, really. But you know, a uh, 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 tournament fishing, we have to have a backup plan. Right. And the wind in Barnett mm -hmm. gets to be a pain. Mm -hmm. And dangerous. So your backup plan for up the river was what those those old lakes and places like that, or the main river channel itself. Well, I hate to give you a undefinite answer, but it's <laughs> it's it's some of all of it. Okay. You know, really. I, well, I, some I, of the other things I know we've got here, and this is one yeah, of our secret weapons. You it is. Me. That's a secret weapon right there, and uh, what it is, I'm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've added. I've, oops, oops. You're good. I've added a different string, a different weight. That's an eight ounce weight. And when you when you throw it in the water to mark your structure, 
it spins like a top, and it goes out of sight. You don't think it's going to ever come back up. Mm. But it, it'll just about dead point mm -hmm. market. And it's cut a black color, and you can go right by it, and you'll never see it. You never don't want to use an orange one because everybody will, yeah. will crank their neck around. Yeah, you tell them right. about that. If you want a company to drop out an orange uh, yeah. marker anywhere. I always have two. And I may have to remark it if I don't get it exactly where I want it, and I'll just take the other one up. Mm -hmm. So I always look over there when I leave, make sure I got two, and I don't leave one. Mm -hmm. So you but, use a marker that much still, even though you've got oh, you definitely, know, definitely. all the, the, the newest electronics, you still use that marker? I get off to the side of it and fish it. You know, otherwise, you, your live scope, you got to be pointed at it all the time. Mm -hmm. And if the wind's blowing, I get on one side or the other, and then I can fish it off to the side. So it gives you that visual target to always hit. Always a visual target. Mm -hmm. and Does it ever spook? Have you noticed it spook, spooking fish now with live scope or not? It, it, you know, you got to get right on top of it. Mm -hmm. So if you're actually going to run them all, dropping it. Mm, no, but really. They, but they're going to come back, immediately come right back. You may have sat there just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they'll they'll leave it once you drop it, but then just kind of swim back, huh? Right. I mean, I've. But you do this only on structure. Uh, 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 what about I, a, a ledge or? Uh, only on structure. You okay. know. I don't. I don't fish ledge. I'll fish ledges. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the long line of fishing ledges. Well, I see yeah. you. I see you around the S curve fishing those ledges, but you just you just search the stumps. I'm just piddling. Yeah. I, 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 that's when I get serious when I put okay. that one out. Okay. <laughs> that black marker comes down. It's business. Right. Right. I know. Uh, that, that joker is meant for business. Yeah. It? Oh, yeah. And this is just a standard one you see everywhere. It looks mm -hmm. like it's got some... Is that just regular spray paint or what? No, paint won't stick to it. Uh, mm -hmm. That's JB Well, and I put some uh, acetone to it and pin it. Yeah. And paint it, you know, where it's stick. Yeah. I know you when you're serious yeah, about it. Yeah, put a lot of effort. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a lot of effort. And then, then the paint will stick to the, you know, JB Well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I'm going to talk about something real quick, too, that's real important for the Crappie Connection, and that's uh, subscribers. Uh, I know everybody on YouTube always asks for subscribers, and, and uh, why I want to bring that up is it doesn't cost anybody for hit the button subscribe. That's right. I had, a, I had a gentleman ask me the other day how much did it cost to subscribe. Everything is free. Uh, but if you hit subscribe, it helps us to put our show out. And... What I mean by that is the more subscribers we get, the more that the sponsors think that we're actually doing something, I guess. But subscribers helps build our business and helps build this podcast. And, you know, our number one goal is to, you know, educate people and, right. and have, like, this man on this show. And uh, But other than that, uh, we, we've had a great time. And I, I definitely – I want to get to your house one day and watch you build a piece of structure. Yeah, can, we, can we make that happen? Well, I could. I, I don't build them hardly anymore. But we'll just build one. For, yeah, we'll just build one. Okay. I'll put it out. I'll make my own little rabbit hole. Right, okay. exactly. All right. All right. Thanks, good. Bernard, for coming on yeah, and no helping problem. us out. No problem. We've got some more to go after no this, problem. but thank you, Rabbit. I cannot thank you enough. Right. Uh, and yeah. Thank you for everything you've done for this sport. Exactly. Thank you. You and your wife. Absolutely, yeah. Miss right. Jane. Right, right. She is my hero. Absolutely, <laughs> both you guys. Mm -hmm. But uh, thank you guys. Come back. Uh, likes and shares is always appreciated. Hit subscribe. Other than that, Brad Chapel here. Bernard Williams. Brad Rogers. Holla. Bye. Out of my front, big muddy river, a place I'll always remember. A cabin on the lake and a fishing pole. Forever here, I'll rest my soul. I can feel.